Yeah, welcome. Um, thank you all. Apologize for being delayed here. Um, I'm actually in the airport, so just landed and and was on a recruiting trip. So apologize about being late. Um, our staff and our players are are extremely excited about the opportunity to to play Minnesota in the Guaranteed Rate Bowl um, in, in Phoenix. You know what better place to be in the month of December than Phoenix, Arizona? So uh, we're looking forward to to spending a few days in the desert. And it's uh, I want to thank the the Guaranteed Rate Bowl committee and really the entire Fiesta Bowl organization. Um, it's known throughout college football for premier events, and so. I know our staff, I speak for our staff, our athletic department, and, and our players, um, we're fired up about being there. And so a lot of respect for the Minnesota football program and what Coach Fleck has done there. Um, I got on and listened to his, you know, last few comments that he had there and um, really got to know PJ through, uh, through Kirk Soraka, who, who's been here, has been a part of our program here for the last several months. Um, and what PJ's done, not only in Minnesota, but what he did at, at, um, at Western Michigan is special. A um, lot of energy, Does a, he's a great motivator, a great teacher. Um, he's a program builder and, he, and, he's, and he's a relator. And he's done a, he's done a tremendous job at, at, both those, at both those universities as a head coach. And he's done it in a lot of different ways. And if you look at this team, um, seeing him a little bit on crossover, watching him because of the respect I have for him, their defense is playing as good as anybody in the country. Um, and their offensive line is special. It's a veteran group, um, regardless of who's played running back. I know they've had some unfortunate injuries there, um, but they've ran the ball on everybody they've played. And then Tanner Morgan, a unique situation. Tanner's from Eastern Kentucky and, uh, and, and knew him and his late father very well. He actually came to our youth camp when I was the offense coordinator at Kentucky. So really proud of what he's been able to do um, during his career and always kept an eye on him um, because we are from the same state. So um, rather not play against him in a bowl game, but uh, I bet I've been pulling for him and, and a lot of respect for him. And so uh, with that, I'll, I'll open it up for questions. Thank you, coach. And thank you for joining us. So media, as you uh, ask your questions of coach Brown, please remember to hit the reactions button on the bottom, uh, raise your hand, get you, we'll get you in the queue and then we'll, uh, we'll tee it all up. So first up, we'll go with Matt Digby from W O A Y TV, Matt. Apologies there. Forgot to unmute myself. Congratulations on the bowl selection coach. Um, looking on paper at the two teams, they basically had identical Novembers, two straight losses followed by two straight wins. The fact that both teams enter this game off two straight wins, do you feel that will give more incentive or add more emotion to the game when you guys meet in a couple weeks? I think both teams are going to come in with confidence. Um, they won a huge rivalry game there in the, in the last game of the regular season. Uh, we had a, we had two conference wins closing out, uh, emotional home win over Texas, and then and beating Kansas on the road, in in a tough environment. So, um, yeah, I think both teams are 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 playing some good football down here, down at the stretch, down the stretch. We'll go with Kevin Kinder from the Blue and Gold. Kevin, hey, good evening, Coach. Glad you could get in here with us. Um, will Kirk be a part of your staff through the bowl game? It's a good question. It's a unique situation. So we're going to kind of work through that. This is uh, maybe a first um, in my career. Um, and we're, we're going to work through that. I don't have a good answer for that right now. Um, and so uh, unique matchup. Uh, we'll figure it out here in the next day or so. Okay, next up, we'll go with Jack Magruder. Jack, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Yeah, Coach, uh, PJ referenced your uh, unique style of defense or, or a little bit of a different flair on the defensive side. What, what is it that you try to do there with your athletes? Uh, we, we, the framework of what we do is, is a little bit different, um, probably more unique in um, – compared to what they're doing in the, in the big 10, um, you know, several teams in the big 12, um, employ similar schemes. I wouldn't say exactly. Uh, we move our front quite a bit. We mix it up between a four down and a three down. Um, we align in some three safety, uh, looks in the secondary, um, play a traditional light box, 
Um, not sure we'll do that against Minnesota due to their ability to run the football. Um, but that's probably what he's alluding to. Andy Greeter from the Pioneer Press, you're up for Coach Brown. Hey, Coach Brown, thanks for taking the time. I appreciate it. Um, I wanted to ask about Kirk, but not about uh, what the future is. I want to ask about the last year with him. And I know you guys have a long history together, but how would you kind of describe him as a as an offensive coach and, and what you might have taken from him this season? Well, so Kirk, Kirk and I's relationship go back uh, a good ways. He actually recruited me uh, when he was a college coach. And then um, I was a receiver coach for him at the University of Delaware for a year when I was kind of just getting started in my career and um, kind of been a mentor and a friend uh, really throughout my coaching career. And we visit a lot over the years offensively. Our philosophies are very similar. Um, and he's been, he's, he's been a great help here, um, not only for, for myself, but I think for really uh, our entire staff, you know, he's, he's helped our, our offensive staff grow I think he's had great insight for our defensive staff. Um, you know, he can't coach on the field, but our players, you know, I think it's been a fun experience for him. You'd have to ask him, but I think it's been something that, that he's enjoyed. It's came at a good point in his career. Uh, so we've been fortunate to, to have him. And I, and I think if you're talking about a, a system, you know, the, the, the best thing I can use is, is he's efficient. You know, if you look throughout his career, he's been extremely efficient. I think he's he's been able to find unique ways to run the football at every stop, regardless of what his personnel or who his personnel is. Um, and so he's efficient. And, and, and that's when you're talking about as an offensive coach, I think that's I think that's what we're all hunting. And he's done it better than most. Thank you, coach. Next up is Greg Hunter from the Blue and Gold News. So Neil, any idea yet on what players will be available, whether opt-outs or injuries? <laughs> Greg, it's a unique time. Did you ask that question when you covered your first bowl game? Uh, no, I would never have thought of it. <laughs> of course, they were wearing leather helmets, so who knows? Hey, so I don't, I really don't have any insight. Uh, we, we gave our guys off. Um, after the Kansas game, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, we lifted weights Wednesday and Thursday, gave them off Friday. We had a lot of practice yesterday. And so uh, that'll come into focus this week. Um, we've got our last week of classes. Finals is next week. Um, we've had a few kids enter the portal. They obviously won't participate in the bowl game. Um, as, for, as far as injuries, um, probably do that the next time we talk. Uh, I'll have a better idea. Um, I in and, in and out of Morgantown for the last week for recruiting. And so talk more about that the next next press conference we, we have just because I have a better idea and have more of a firm answer for who's going to participate. As far as opt-outs, I'm not sure yet. Um, you know, that's something that, that, that everybody's having to deal with. I'm sure that, that PJ will have to deal with answering some questions as far as that goes as well. And But what our philosophy is on that is we're going to take the group that's that's prepared to play that is motivated to play and we're going to give our guys the very best opportunity to win all right coach joe bricado you're up next joe and you know, obviously a much different bowl experience this year to last year where it was just treated just as a road game What's the value of, particularly for the younger guys, to see an entire trip to get a couple of days of on-site practices and, and everything that goes with it? Your bowl games are rewards to me. And this has been an up and down year for us. I think it's been challenging at times. Um, you know, I, I think if I, if I polled our people and said, hey, we're going to beat Texas, we're going to beat Virginia Tech, we're going to beat Iowa State, I think our, our initial reaction to our fan base was, man, we're going to have a really good year. Um, and while we did win those games, we faltered in a couple, particularly before the bye week, um, where we didn't play our best football. So it's been a challenge. I'm proud of how our kids responded. Um, I, thought, I felt like they handled adversity. Um, there were several times when I think uh, people counted us out and we were able to get off the mat 
and, and get to a bowl eligibility. And these games are rewards, and we're going to treat them as that. Um, you know, not only when we're out in Arizona, but we're out we're here in Morgantown during bowl prep. Um, we're going to we're going to do everything we possibly can to make this a great experience. Um, and so the fact that we get to go to Arizona and the the city of Phoenix is one of you know, in the, the really the greater Phoenix area is one of my favorite places. Um, the, obviously, the climate. Um, we're going to stay at a world class resort, which will be a neat experience for our guys. Uh, we're going to play in a in a professional um, uh, uh, stadium, which is something unique for our players. Um, they're going to get time to spend with their with with their teammates, um, doing doing things locally that that they haven't experienced. So, I think this will be outside maybe a handful of our players. This will be their first real bowl experience. So I think that's something that that they've earned and, and something we'll make sure that 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 they enjoy. Thank you, Coach. Keenan Cummings from WV Sports. Keenan. Neil, you mentioned recruiting. Um, how how are things going on that front? And and realistically, how many guys would you like to sign by December? And how are you gonna weigh kind of transfers moving forward as well? Yeah, so uh, I think that you and I talked about this maybe in one of our end of season press conferences is um, we're going to be in a position between now and, and January where we can add the 32 spots. So we're going to take full advantage of, of the seven spots that the, the one time NCAA or the NCAA is allowing us on the one time. So we're going to take full advantage of that. Um, in the December signing date, we hope to sign um, in, the, in the 20th range. You know, I don't want to give you an exact number. Um, I like our progress on the recruiting front. Um, you know, I really do. I think that um, a lot of those were guys that visited in the summer, and now we're getting – they came to us in the summer on official visits, and now uh, I'm taking advantage of the one-time opportunity to go out and see them on their turf, you know, and doing home visits and school visits and those type of things. Um, and it's a really reduced window. So basically have that Sunday after the Kansas game all the way – um, to this uh, week from today to get that done. And so seeing those guys that are committed and then also our top prospects goes to three prospects this weekend. Uh, as soon as I get done, I'm going to have a, have dinner with a recruit tonight uh, that's, that's on campus. So um, whenever y'all get done, the sooner the better for me. <laughs> and, uh, and so I'm going to do that and then I'll be back on the road in the morning and then we'll host another handful of prospects next weekend. And so like the progress we're making, I feel really good about it. We've got we've got to add some key pieces on the defensive line. That's the that's the one spot that we've got a really good pool of prospects that we're that we're chasing, but we've got to get some of those in the boat. In the spirit of getting you out of here, Coach, we'll finish up with Ryan Pritt of the Charleston Gazette Mail. Ryan, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, Neil. I mean, hell, you could have told me that before. I wouldn't raise my hand, you know. <laughs> no, no, you're good. You're good. All right. <laughs> No, uh, you, you called Minnesota one of the better defenses in the country and, um, you know, haven't played some good ones this year, particularly with Golden State, Baylor. Um, and I know you have some scouting left to do, but, you know, how, how, how do they compare to those? What, what makes them different as far as you know? And does, and does playing defenses like the ones you've played help you in a situation like that? Well, it's still early. So I'll tell you that as soon as I found out, so I found out we were going to play Minnesota about 30 minutes before I got on an airplane. And the first thing I did was kind of pull up their, their record. And, and again, um, because I have a lot of respect for PJ and because um, there is connection there, I followed what they've done, you know, and, and, and so I knew they were eight and four. I knew that they'd really finished strong. Um, and, and I knew that they had some injuries at running back, but they'd still been, been able to win games. And they were really running the football with a variety or with an array uh, or a variety of running backs, whoever's kind of a next man up, as, as, as looks like to me has been their approach and they've been all been effective. Um, but then I, I looked deeper into it and I was looking at their defensive stats and their ability to stop the run. You know, if you look over the last, and it's, I want to say six games, I don't have it right in front of me, but what they've done from a rushing defense and a total offense, the, the number of yards is, is really impressive. Um, and so we have, you know, we've played several really good defenses in, in our league, you know, I think the misconception, and, and this is really for the Minnesota media more than ours, the misconception is in the, is the Big 12, the, 
there's not defense. But that's in the last three years, that's really not been the case. You know, Oklahoma State has been as good as any defense in the country. Baylor um, has, has played at an extremely high level. Um, and we can go on from there. But those are the two um, that played in our championship game. And they're there because they could run the football and they played great defense. And so I think Minnesota is very similar to those two programs and they're able to stop the run. And, uh, and so other than getting a quick kind of a scout report from, from one of our graduate assistants that I trust, um, I'll hold, I'll hold other comments. So, so I get the chance to watch them more. Coach Brown, thank you for your time. I know it's busy for you this time of year and as you look forward to the recruiting period, but we're excited it's bowl season and, and we look forward to having you here in a few short weeks here in Arizona and then in downtown Phoenix on the 28th of December for an 8.15 p.m. local kick. That's 10.15 for those of you at West Virginia. Yes, we understand that, uh, but it'll be great, some great primetime football. So thank you, Coach. Hey. Appreciate it. I'm well, just I appreciate gonna... it. And I can guarantee you one thing, the Mountaineers will stay up. They'll <laughs> be having a good time at 10.15 at and – and, and we got no problem in West Virginia pushing, pushing it late night. And so our guys are excited. I appreciate the invite. And, and we look forward to getting there and, and representing West Virginia University in, in our football program. Thank you all.